hey, this right here, CircuitPython, is quite, quite famously also known as Code Plus Community. And uh, one of the ways that we like to celebrate that is through our Python on Hardware newsletter. So if you uh, head on over to Adafruit Daily, you can subscribe to the Python on Hardware newsletter. Uh, and this gives you a glimpse into sort of the weekly happenings in the wide world of Python running on hardware. Uh, generally, we mean hardware that isn't a general purpose computer, but more single board computers and uh, microcontrollers. Uh, but sometimes it's just general Python stuff. And these are things, some of them are Adafruit uh, people, some of them are out in the community, so it's a mix. Uh, and I like to give you a few highlights from this, but first I'll say, go and subscribe if you're into this, if you like this kind of stuff. Head to adafruitdaily.com uh, and you can subscribe. Uh, all you need is to put in your email address. We vow to never ever spam you or sell it to bad people or do anything terrible with it. Uh, you can uh, cancel at any time if you get tired of getting something in your mailbox. Um, there's a little subscribe here link right there. So the, uh, the first one I'll mention is this right here, the uh, CircuitPython 8.0.0 Beta 5 has been released. Uh, and a few notable things in this is the Wi-Fi on Pico W uh, has been added to this release. Also, uh, the Wi-Fi workflow in general, so being able to uh, get to the contents of your CircuitPython board that has Wi-Fi built in uh, remotely from a browser, as well as um, putting files on it, editing files, saving, and all that. that all that workflow has been uh, getting a lot of attention and is in this release. Uh, also, another one that I saw that looks really interesting I'd like to check out is Bulk Analog I.O. Input, um, which sounds like, and maybe someone uh, can, can tell me this, is Analog Buff I.O. available on RP2040 chips, which sounds like something that would speed up uh, reading multiple analog inputs, multiple ADC pins, uh, which, which could be great for, uh, for a lot of the types of projects I like to do that have lots of knobs on them. So I'm curious about that one. Uh, and let's see, scrolling on, so you can see there's a, there's a bunch of notes here about what came in, uh, in that beta of, ADA of 8, not ADA, of 8.0.0 beta 5. Uh, another uh, piece of news in here was there are updates to the Raspberry Pi supply chain, uh, which has been uh, difficult to get, as, as a lot of you know. Um, and they have announced that they're going to be getting a lot out to retailers uh, soon. Uh, the availability in retail channels should be improving a lot in the beginning of the new year, and by the second half of 2023, they think they're going to be bringing back significant stock. So um, if you can hold out a little longer, don't pay scalper prices for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, wait, and, and you should be uh, rewarded. Uh, Another interesting uh, link on here, so a lot of these are, are long reads that you can go and click on and check out, uh, and I've seen info about this. There are a few different synthesizers in Korg's uh, recent lineup. I think the uh, Op6 and the Wave State and maybe one other. Uh, they're all a similar hardware architecture, and internally they're running on essentially a Raspberry Pi compute module. So there's an there's a, uh, article on this that you can go check out to learn more about uh, how they are using the Raspberry Pi inside of uh, those Korg synths. Uh, hey, I mentioned this, right? Joey's uh, tutorial page for uh, the Christmas lights on his user page. Uh, here's here's a info about it. So if you didn't watch Show and Tell today, but you did subscribe to the Python on Hardware newsletter, you would have known about it. Uh, and if you did both, you know twice as much. And now I'm talking about it, and it's really just going to fold in on itself like a fractal eating a fractal. Um, okay, I got excited there. But yeah, uh, there's a link to his Mastodon post about that here, and there's a link to his user page, which I'll, I'll uh, go to right after this. Uh, some other interesting stuff that I saw in here, a project that we posted, which is this uh, weather station project of the week. Uh, and thanks again to Anne, by the way, who, who heads up the, uh, the production of this newsletter. It's a massive task every week, and uh, it's really great to have all of this news coming from so many sources uh, brought together in one place. Uh, 
And uh, she found this one here, also on Mastodon. This is a uh, rainbow weather project that was ported from a ESP8266 over to a Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's using CircuitPython. And it has this really nice uh, acrylic uh, LED light pipe type of display on it to give you information about uh, what the weather is. Uh, here was another really cool project that, uh, let me see, I'm going to grab a link to this one that I put over here somewhere. Uh, this is Kevin MacLear, who created a Guitar Hero game using the Pimeroni Galactic Unicorn, which is a big uh, PCB with uh, a bazillion uh, LEDs. I'm not sure how many, but lots and lots of LEDs on it. Uh, uh, RGB LEDs on it, and this is running MicroPython on a Pico W, uh, and this is a type of rhythm game that you can play using a uh, set of buttons down at the bottom. If you go uh, follow the links that are in the newsletter, uh, you'll arrive here eventually, and then you'll accept some cookies probably like I do. Uh, and he's got a really nice write-up about the build. There's a YouTube video that shows it in action and information about how it's put together. Uh, so, yeah, it's a fi 583 RGB LEDs. It's a 53 by 11 grid, and those are bonkers numbers. Why 53 and why 11? I'm sure there's a good reason, but those, those make me itch. Uh, and uh, you can, yeah, you can take a look here. There's also a really cool silk screen that they did on the back there with this epic artwork, as they say. They're totally right. Uh, so that's a, a rhythm game, Guitar Hero style rhythm game where you have lanes of notes coming and you have to play them in time. Very cool. Uh, also found out about that thanks to the, uh, the newsletter. And uh, let's see, Mark Gambler wrote up, uh, Mark is a, a frequent visitor to our shows and tells. Uh, he wrote up the uh, Christmas display that he has made from NeoPixel strips here so you can uh, find a link there to go over to Hackster.io to find out more about it. Uh, and one other that I blew past that i got to go back up to because this thing looks amazing. Uh, this is a Unicode input device. So if you're tired of having real normal keys and typing at moderately fast speeds and you want to slow things way the heck down, uh, this is a series of toggle switches that you use to select a Unicode byte uh, for, for a character or an emoji, and then you press the one uh, button on there to send the whole thing. It's wild, uh, really something else. Uh, and that build is available on Hackaday, so you can go check that out. Uh, and then the last thing on here, this is kind of fascinating. I saw uh, info about a project. This is kind of a, a, mostly a Python project more than a hardware project, but it does involve hardware. Uh, just not the typical microcontrollers that we're using. This right here, first of all, NTSC test pattern caught my attention. Uh, this is a project called VHS Decode, and this is a software-defined videotape player. So what this is is software that you can hook up a VCR, and they, they support uh, beta and VHS and super VHS and one other, I think, uh, through an RF, uh, I think it's RF decoding box, and it can, through the, the software defined part of it means it does not decode the video. It actually captures it raw, and then you can use the software to decode it the way you want. One example of why this matters, uh, they're very typically in broadcast uh, captures, when, pe when people record off of broadcast TV, especially old archives, uh, there's a vertical blanking area above where the picture tube uh, makes your, your picture visible that can contain data, and often that's where data for things like subtitles was contained. Um, uh, also time code, if it's, if it's a type of tape that had time code on it. So you'd never get that if you used a regular old capture card. This VHS decode project will allow you to do fancy things like that, uh, as, as well as uh, just the, uh, the, the bizarre types of... Um, data arrangements that come off of the diagonal spinning drums of, of the, the tape players. Uh, this, this project aims, is open source and aims to, to handle a lot of these um, archiving projects for, for VHS and other types of videotapes. So super cool. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what I have to say about the, uh, the Python on hardware newsletter. Really, really great uh, issue. Thanks so much for everyone who's, who's involved with putting that together.